So I kind of wanted to make a video and upload it on Christmas Day, just wishing y'all a Merry Christmas. So now that it's after Christmas, I hope y'all had a very Merry Christmas. Now that you spent a lot of your hard-earned money on gifts for your friends and family, I'm sure you're searching Google, you know, what is the most paid city for software engineers? Where can I make the most money? And you're probably going to be stumbling upon San Francisco, New York City, you know, some of those very popular major cities that have software engineers. But would it catch you by the surprise if I told you that the people who live in San Francisco and New York City don't really make the most money? Like they may have the highest salary, but they don't make the most money. It's an interesting thing, Googling stuff and kind of taking everything at face value. That's kind of what I was trying to go over in a video that I made earlier this year, Salary Range as a Computer Science Major, where I essentially told you that the average salary for a software engineer, or a data scientist, or a systems analyst isn't what you're going to be getting paid right out of college, just like salary-wise in terms of how much money you actually make, the average salary even if it is the average salary you make, it may not mean you're going to be living this lavish lifestyle that you would think at getting paid $135,000, $150,000 a year. In every industry, you can be doing the same exact job, but if one person lives in New York City and the other person lives in the middle of Wyoming, you're going to be getting paid different salaries simply because the cost of living in New York City is much higher than that of a place like Wyoming. This is no different in the software development industry. You're going to be getting paid a higher salary living in San Francisco than you would living where I live in Hampton Roads. In order to prove this theory, we're going to take a deeper dive into what software engineers actually make in San Francisco. We're going to take the formula that we created to mold what they actually make, and we're going to apply that to other cities like Seattle and other popular cities for software engineers. But before we really get into any of the details, I kind of have to, to do my spiel. If you're newer Around here subscribe if you like video topics like this take a look at my channel see if you like it if you like it subscribe if you don't don't if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up because thumbs ups really just you know boost my self-esteem and I like my self-esteem rather high so make sure you hit that thumbs up button first we have to define what I mean by how much software engineers actually make and this is essentially the formula that I've come up with true earnings which is what they actually make equal income minus taxes minus cost of living. The average annual salary for a software engineer in San Francisco is $136,000. That includes everyone from entry-level software engineers all the way up to senior software engineers. However, when we apply our equation when it comes to taxes and cost of living, it paints a little bit of a different picture. For taxes, we need to take federal tax, state tax, and FICA tax into consideration. FICA is Social Security, Medicare. Your federal tax on a $136,000 salary is $24,050. Your state tax is $9,492, and your FICA tax is $9,993. So after taxes, you are left with $92,526 of take-home pay. And if you ask me, that's still a pretty good chunk of change. However, when it comes to cost of living, there are a few things to take into consideration. I may not be listing all of them, but a few of the big ones, rent, transportation, food, utilities, and healthcare. And in all honesty, I was actually going to record this video including all of those inside of cost of living, but since everything is so variable, we're just going to go over some of the percentages for San Francisco, and we're really just going to consider rent into the equation. I understand this can throw things out of whack and off balance, but that's kind of where we sit. It, it really depends on your lifestyle and how much you spend on food. However, what we do know is that you're going to be spending 23% more on groceries in San Francisco than the national average. So if you spend $300 a month on food in San Francisco, you're going to be spending $369 a month on food. And one thing we know about transportation in San Francisco is they have a very good public transit system. You can pay anywhere from what, $68 to $80, I believe, per month to access public transit and essentially get anywhere you need to within the city. However, if you're going to be a driver, you're going to own your own car, one, you have to worry about a car payment, which that's going to essentially be the same everywhere. And unless you drive a Tesla, you're going to be spending 38% more in fuel and gas than you would living anywhere else in the country. It's 38% more than the national average in San Francisco for gas. And not to mention how much you will pay downtown parking. I hear it's $20 a day, or you can spend $200 to $400 a month to park downtown. I don't know. I live in the 
in the county, out in the country, so I don't really know a whole lot about like city parking. Sorry, my ignorance. And then something else we know is that doctor visits are roughly 20% more than the national average. So all of this is more than the national average in San Francisco. The only thing that is different, that is less than the national average in San Francisco is utilities. And in all honesty, that is generally one of your cheapest expenses where the average person in San Francisco is going to be spending roughly $150 in utilities per month. However, we're gonna take all of that and we're gonna push it to the side because that is heavily variable, like I said, depending on your lifestyle. What we are gonna focus on under cost of living is rent. Now, if you wanna rent a two bedroom apartment in San Francisco, you're gonna be spending roughly $4,650. However, if you wanna just have a one bedroom apartment, you're gonna be spending $3,650. Mind you, the average household has three bedrooms in it and you're gonna be sitting at a one bedroom apartment spending more than most of those people that are going to be having three bedrooms. But that's that's neither here nor there. We're going to keep it consistent comparing it to all other cities. We're going to keep it with one bedroom apartment, $3,650 cost of living. Or if you want to look at it annually, since that's what we're focused on, that is $43,800. So if we want to start off with your salary at $136,000 in San Francisco, we want to take out the taxes. That would be $43,474. And then we want to take out that rent, which is what we're going to consider our cost of living, $43,800. And that leaves you with $48,726 of true earnings according to our formula. But as we know, that's not including all of those other cost of livings and that isn't what you're gonna be able to keep. This is essentially your fund money or your save money. If you wanna add more money into your 401k or your IRA, or if you want to go golfing or grab a few beers on the weekend or even go out to eat, then you're gonna have to dip into that pool and spend more money. That's not what you get to save every single year unless you live with your parents or something, I don't know. Now let's take Seattle and plug that into the same formula where we're gonna be taking out taxes and cost of living and see how that fares up against San Francisco. So first, taxes. One important thing when it comes to taxes, like I said, we're gonna take federal, state, and FICA taxes into consideration. The thing about Washington State, where Seattle resides, there's no state tax. So there's only federal and FICA tax, which let's just save a lot more money. Or in other words, you're only spending $31,577 in taxes at an average annual salary of $126,913 in Seattle. And the average cost of living, which like I said, in this case, we're only taking rent into consideration, a one bedroom apartment in Seattle costs somewhere between $1,600 and $1,900. I guess it just depends on where you're located and how nice the apartment is. So we're gonna sit at that right in the middle, $1,750, which annually that comes out to be $21,000. And now if we do the math there, what you are left over in true earnings is $77,336. As you can see, that is roughly $30,000 more than what you would be pocketing as true earnings in San Francisco. I also did all of the math when coming into food and transportation and health and all that stuff. And it was also roughly $30,000. The only difference is in San Francisco, taking all of those into account, you're sitting at around $32,500. And then in Seattle, you were sitting at true earnings at about $61,000. So those other cost of livings do take a big toll. It's about $16,000 worth a year worth of other cost of living. But like I said, for the sake of my sanity in terms of math and I just don't really want to argue with anyone saying well you know I spend one dollar a month eating food we're just going to go with the whole rent and taxes and, and income thing. Now that we have an equation that we all agree on let's plug in a few other cities. As you can see Seattle is actually one of the best cities to be in if you want to see how much money you can pocket for saving or for having fun with. And then you can see that San Francisco the top paying area in terms of salary isn't all it's cracked up to be. And I know I'm picking on San Francisco a little bit, but I mean, everyone just loves California, San Francisco, the, the idea of, you know, being a software engineer over there, but it's not, 
it's not exactly what it appears to be if you're looking at your Google searches and all of this information at face value. You have to look a little bit deeper into it and understand what software engineers actually make and not what they get paid. I hope that shined a little bit of light on the situation for all of you who are looking into being a software engineer, maybe considering moving across the country to pursue a higher salary, and maybe it'll get you to think and do a little bit more research into what you will actually be making as a software engineer. That's similar to why I made my salary range as a computer science major. So many people were looking at the national average of software engineers and thinking that's what they're going to make right out of college which that's not really the case. You're gonna be looking at entry level jobs as a software engineer, as a data science or a systems analyst when it comes to graduating from computer science. So that's similar to this. Just because you see something online, you see 136,000 average salary, that's a lot of money, but you don't get to have a lot of money for what you want to do. You're gonna be paying a lot in rent for not such a nice apartment, and you're gonna be paying a lot in taxes, and you're not gonna be able to save as much as you originally thought. So again, Merry Christmas to y'all. I hope you have a good New Year's, a safe New Year's. I'll see you guys next year, because I think this is my final video of 2018. Maybe. Let's just say I have a lot planned for 2019 that I think y'all are really going to like. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and like the video. Till next time, guys. Have a good one. Peace. I appreciate y'all watching.